Hey there, everyone. We are going to get started with our semester, taking a look at chapter one, which is sort of just an overview of business intelligence, or BI as we'll call it, uh, some analytics, and talk a little bit about uh, data science as well. So let's jump right into our material. Uh, first, I just want to remind everyone about the book. There is a book published in the syllabus, and we will be using it throughout the semester. Um, it is required for class. You can get it in the MGA bookstore, or you can get it from Pearson.com as a rental for uh, about 11 bucks a month. Um, we have some other places you could probably get it as well. I'm sure Amazon or, or wherever. Um, it is an older edition. It's the fourth edition. That's the most recent, but um, they, they haven't updated it in a long time, and there's no real need to for what our purposes are. So please make sure that you have that book as soon as possible. All of our lectures are what I think are some of the salient points out of each chapter, but you will need to make sure that you are reading them because anything in them is fair game. Um, <clears throat> I tend not to use some of the examples in the book, so it's unlikely that I would ever test on those, but the rest of the content is certainly fair game uh, for our midterm, our final, and uh, for anything in our assignments. So getting started here, let's just talk about the changing environment, the evolution of the need of data and the ability of data to produce what it is that we may be looking for to drive our businesses. So uh, some of the factors just leading to how we have BI today and, and how we're positioned to use it are the increased hardware, software, network capabilities. Uh, much of what we consider BI today started around the 1970s. And at that time, things were a little more rudimentary in terms of what hardware could do, computer technology and, and capability, the software that we had, and certainly the ability to network uh, servers, services, equipment, what have you, to uh, have a more breadth of uh, the data reach. Group communication and collaboration, uh, most things, uh, of course, being done in the pre-email era for the most part, um, made it difficult to collaborate along along um, business lines to produce data and to figure out meaningful ways to use it. Improved data management, the way that we have um, new technologies that have come on the scene since the 70s, uh, as well as an evolution of the, the, the technology that we already have, specifically around giant data warehouses and big data. And we will talk briefly about introducing BI or big data today. Um, but the ability to have and store massive amounts of records is really what has fueled this revolution for BI. <clears throat> the analytical support, the training, the experience that we've had over the past 50 years have led us into a very interesting path in what we can do with data. And we'll talk about some examples um, as well. Overcoming the cognitive limits and processing and storing information, this really reaches back to the capability of our technology, the computer systems and their robustness, as well as how we can store data for uh, not only fast archiving, but fast retrieval to get analytics in um, even a real time uh, situation. Knowledge management, kind of the way that we store and disseminate information within our organizations, how we share that, um, or how we protect it from outside entities and the ability for anywhere, anytime support, which also can mean anywhere, anytime analytics uh, using a, a more globalized view of how we can produce uh, produce metrics that our companies are using. <clears throat> so talking about the framework for BI, what sort of uh, supports BI, makes BI? <clears throat> we start off early, early on with DSS or decision support systems. Then we'll move into EIS, uh, that kind of evolved in from decision support, really just trying to produce data that managers may be able to use uh, to give information on how the, uh, the business is performing. And then we move into EIS, or Enterprise Information Systems, where we're able to take the data just instead of it being on a small subset of the business or a siloed within the business, uh, being able to bring that out uh, much further and look at an enterprise wide information system so that we can see what's happening in manufacturing and how that may impact sales or vice versa, or how HR staffing um, could impact how we're, how we're selling our product. And then we move into business intelligence, which is sort of an all encompassing term. And it's really quite broad and there's lots of different terms. There's no single one definition really of BI. 
uh, it is quite broad. And our book describes it as an umbrella term that combines the different architectures, tools, databases, analytical tools or platforms, applications, and methodologies. Um, if you try to narrow that down to focus it a little bit more, um, you can have descriptive analytics tools and techniques. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about descriptive analytics in just a little bit here. We'll talk just in a moment, the next slide, about our brief history of BI from the 70s all the way through today. Uh, we'll talk about the origins and drivers in BI. Where did this come from? As well as uh, look at some architecture. So I mentioned just uh, two slides ago, the really the impetus of what we know as BI today started around in the 1970s with just simple routine reporting that came out of departments every single day. Here were our sales. Here's how many of X, Y, or Z we produce today. Here's how many of <clears throat> whatever item is in our warehouse. Here's how many employees we onboarded today. Here's how much revenue we took in today. And it started to move into expert systems, which were really well-defined systems and people that understood database information uh, really tied to a specific area of the business though. They were subject matter experts just in their particular area. And those are the folks that we often had to go to to get any kind of data. There really wasn't um, a widespread data availability. You had to go to the subject matter experts or SMEs um, and or collect that data directly from the, the source, which could have come from surveys, for instance. We move into decision support systems, and that's being able to produce some kind of metrics uh, to give to decision makers in the business. And uh, they use it as a tool for, okay, we should expand in a market or we should close a market or we should buy more supplies because we're about to have a huge demand uh, based on something that we have coming. Then we move more into the enterprise or executive information systems where we have ERP systems, enterprise resource planning, which helps us with uh, everything from manufacturing to staff planning. Uh, as, as it continues to evolve, we get more um, more sophisticated in how we can store and retrieve data. Then we move into data warehousing. Data warehousing is a simple database on a massive scale. Uh, it has tons of transactions that are posted to it typically once a day or so um, or, or longer um, and is, is used as a repository for data all across the entire organization. We started to develop dashboards and scorecards, which became sort of more of a visualization of data. Instead of just lists and lists of data or people or sales, we moved them into having charts and graphs that made it easier for executives to kind of read it in a flash uh, and make a decision. Then we started moving into the term BI that we're a little bit more familiar with today. We have cloud computing systems, software as a service, data, text mining, and we'll take a look at some examples of data and text mining a little later in the semester. Uh, it's really an interesting activity to, to learn a little bit about data mining. And then business intelligence gets sort of its, its terminology um, that we, we derive from uh, what it's doing and, and move it forward. And then getting into more contemporary times, even though this is 2010s, it's still pretty contemporary in terms of its history, big data analytics, uh, those giant data stores that we have, think Twitter or X, maybe it's called today, maybe it'll have a different name tomorrow, uh, Facebook um, and, and the likes where we're able to mine massive amounts of data in real time uh, to produce really interesting views on, on the world and society. In memory, in database, this is where our server technology and storage technologies have advanced to the point that um, we can very quickly um, very quickly read data from the databases and not <clears throat> uh, not have to wait you know for overnight processing or something like that we have the capability to do a lot of database processing in real time and then i also mentioned those social media um, and analytics so what are the some of the things the components of bi what filters into that um, taking a look here, there are a, a, lot of, a lot of items and we'll just cover some of the bigger ones here. Um, one interesting aspect is always Excel. There's a lot of Excel data that we bring into our databases through a process called ETL, uh, Extract, Transform, and Load. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little later in the semester. Uh, you'll see an ETL at the very top 
Um, and that read that goes into our data warehouses. And then you'll see underneath that we have a data mart. A data warehouse may be information from the entire company, but then you might see a data mart or a data lake, which is a subset of that data pertaining to one particular aspect of our business. It could be finance or marketing, HR, or something like that. And those users only have access to that pool of data, uh, that lake of data or the data available in that small mart. Um, Enterprise information systems, enterprise support systems, financial reporting. We'll talk about OLAP in just a moment. Um, scorecards, uh, data and text mining, and we'll talk about predictive analytics uh, a little later on. So these are just some of the components that are reading into BI uh, that we'll be exploring as we move uh, as we move on. Talking about the architecture, the architecture of BI is all of the some of the I guess more uh, physical components that might make up some of that thing or tacit components. Um, our data sources coming in, our talented technical staff, our business users who are just looking for that information uh, to help make decisions, managers who are trying to develop strategy around it, and the different interfaces that we may have, a, a browser, a portal, or a dashboard um, to retrieve that information. Touching back on the earlier graphic of the timeline, a little more history on BI. Um, by about 2006 is about when BI entered the popular vernacular. Um, today it's getting a revamp, but it's often called data analytics or data science, and we'll, we'll discuss that in just a moment. But the term really popped on the scene around 2006. Um, but its roots go all the way back to the 1970s, as we saw in our earlier diagram. It's an umbrella term, as we tried to define it earlier. It's sort of just an umbrella that has architectures, tool sets, databases, methodologies, tools, applications. But its major objective is to enable interactive access to the data, to enable us to be able to manipulate the data to make graphs or, or to do something else with and to give the, that data to the managers um, for them to or, or analysts to product, uh, conduct appropriate analytics uh, based on whatever question we're trying to ask of the data. Analyzing historical data often tells us interesting insights into the future. Um, history does often repeat itself, not only in our contemporary society, but also when you look at data trends, there's often very cyclical um, things that we can learn from that. You know, we can look at 10 years worth of sales in the winter for bathing suits and um, you would think wow that's a strange time for folks to buy bathing suits but it's when a lot of people take vacations in the colder climates or go on cruises and they are looking for those bathing suits so if you go into target in the early parts of the new year uh, you'll often start to see some some bathing suits in there and that's people uh, that is years and years worth of target sales saying hmm, that this time of the year people tend to look at this and then they can also look at how that grows or shrinks over that time frame and know how to do appropriate buying. <clears throat> I mentioned earlier we would talk about OLAP and I will and I'll also introduce OLTP. So I will start off OLTP online transaction processing. This is the company's operational database. This is your enterprise resource management, your customer resource management. This is your table that gathers all the sales data and processes those every day. This is the running track of how many, um, <clears throat> how many boxes of cereal you've, you've sold at your store. And these are transactions, meaning they're happening at the time um, something is going on or being recorded at the time of sale, something along those, those lines. The goal of this database is data capture, period. Um, this is not usually the one where you do data cleanup. This is not the one where you do typically reporting out of because its nature is it's not always clean, um, not always uh, well pruned, and it is changing every second, um, particularly if it's based on something like sales data. For those types of scenarios, we have online analytical processing or OLAP. OLAP are our data warehouses. These are our reporting repositories. These are where we go to actually find out what's going on with the business. Um, and this is where we base our decision support. So we will take um, <clears throat> the data out of the transactional database, the TP, OLTP, and we'll load it into the OLAP database, the OLAP database. Um, most companies will probably do it once a day uh, overnight. Sometimes they'll do it weekly. 
Um, but typically it's not done in real time and it's not done more than once a day. Uh, you don't necessarily want to give um, reporting to executives that has to be changed every every five minutes because the data refreshes. Um, the relationship between the two is just that. OLTP is our transactions, all of our sales data, and then nightly or weekly we load that into an OLAP data warehouse. And that's where we do our visualization. That's where we do our predictive analysis and, and everything from there. That's also where we may manipulate the data if we need to do a little bit of cleanup. It is extremely important that the focus of BI is aligned with the long-term <clears throat> or core strategies of the business. The proper alignment is absolutely key. We have to understand the measures or metrics or the key performance indicators, KPIs, that leadership wants to know about. And then we go back to our database architecture and we make sure that we're capturing data salient to those points so that we can produce what it is that they're looking for. Um, it will drive the architecture and the technology stack. If your company says we're going serverless, well, then you're building all of these things in a cloud architecture, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, what have you. Um, <clears throat> we don't, we want to make sure that we have um, the, the architecture lined up with, you know, where the company wants to go strategically. And we're not building a bunch of uh, data warehouses anywhere or data centers for that matter. Developing and maintaining the best practices around data collection and proper use. Um, how is it that we're going to collect data? What are our methods? How are we going to bring it all into our, our warehouse? Um, and the proper use of it. You know, you have a lot of very specific use cases in the healthcare industry, for instance, and um, people need to be trained early on when it's appropriate and when it's not appropriate to use data from patient charts uh, for research or reporting or what have you. There's a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of training that has to go around that. Um, and the proper utilization of technology at the right time, the right place, the right data coupled with analytical capabilities can be game changing. But what about privacy and security, um, specifically on that healthcare data and other data that you may not think about that's being collected, certainly the metadata that's being collected on our uh, social media platforms, um, I think people might be surprised if they know what exactly is known <clears throat> known about all of us. We'll touch back on real-time capabilities and privacy security in our first assignment. So the analytics overview, and this is also just sort of an overview of what's coming uh, throughout the next couple of uh, weeks and, and months throughout the rest of the year. Um, BI is often interchangeable with analytics, and I will typically say BI myself. <clears throat> analytics is the process of developing actional decisions or recommendations for actions based on those historical insights. And both of these are a combination of computer technology, management, sci uh, management science, and statistics. This is an interesting graphic that I think is a good crosswalk for what happens where <clears throat> and under what. Um, we will cover the topics of descriptive, predictive, and prescriptive analytics over the next several months. So descriptive will often look at what happened, what is happening, um, looking back. Predictive will look at what, what's about to happen um, or what is happening right now or what is, you know, based on that historical information, um, when will something happen or why? And then we have prescriptive, which is, okay, now I have all this data. What should I do if I have a certain outcome that I can change? What possibly will this help in the future? So we look at per, uh, descriptive as what happened. Prescriptive is what's about to happen or what is happening. And prescriptive is what should I do about it? How can I, how can I fix this? So taking a look at the first one here, descriptive analytics. This is descriptive or it's reporting analytics. It's going into that OLAP database and just showing us what happened at a specific point in time, helping us to answer any questions of what happened at that time. It's retrospective, it's all happened. Um, the enablers for this are our OLAP database or our data warehouse. And we'll look at this typically through data visualization. We'll have dashboards or scorecards, and we can use some descriptive statistics on it as well to say, you know, percents of this happened because of why, um, or, <clears throat> you know, this is uh, the direction we've seen growth over the past several, several years to, or so. Then we'll move into predictive. What is likely to happen in the future um, for seeing events that we know about based on some of our historical data. So we look at that past data and try to predict the future. 
This will do a lot of, uh, this was supported by a lot of data mining or text mining, web mining. And then we use some forecasting technology. So, you know, how many boxes of cereal, again, will we need to purchase um, coming into the next several months? It's back to school season um, in our retail stores. What, what are they stocking up on? Pop-Tarts, futons, or are they, you know, gearing up on paper towels and storage totes? Um, that may be a different part of the year during move-out season, perhaps. So we'll try to do some forecasting with data that we already have and things that we know. And then we get into prescriptive analytics. We want to know the best possible decision to take based on the data that we know. We'll use descriptive and predictive to create some different models, some hypotheticals, <clears throat> and then determine the way forward. We'll use some optimization, some simulation, some modeling, a little bit of heuristic programming, and we'll bring in some, some analytics from a lot of different domains, um, <clears throat> business operations, uh, finance, as well as different types of data science to help us understand uh, the best path forward. So is it analytics or data science? Well, it depends. <laughs> um, analytics is uh, analytics, and thus an analysts are often the people that are doing the activities around the data, capturing the cleaning, the reporting, <clears throat> and building some of that visualization. Uh, and then we move into data science or our data scientists, or the ones in those professions, using additional skills um, to perform predictions and statistical analysis. Uh, these folks might be actuaries. They might have other advanced computer science training um, that will help us take the data that we know um, and move it into the next piece. So uh, really around the skill set, the tool set, the exposure might determine the difference between analytics, is it analytics or is it data science? A quick intro to big data analytics, and we'll talk a lot more about this later on. What is big data? Hint, it's not just data that's big. It's not just <clears throat> um, huge file sizes or anything like that. It is a type of data that is coming into data warehouses extremely quickly and in large volumes. Um, they may be small snippets of data, text from our tweets or our uh, Instagram captions, things like that. But it is data that can't be stored or processed easily using traditional tools and means. Uh, and it's often just because of the size and the volume of it. It typically refers to data coming in three different forms, large, um, large volumes of it, structured, which could be um, question, survey, answer type things, unstructured, which will be like our Instagram captions or Twitter, Twitter comments, things like that and it's constantly moving. It is coming in all the time. There are several Vs of big data. There are three, there are five, there are seven. It depends on what book, and our, our book is looking first off at three, the volume, the variety, and the velocity. The amount of data, the different types or sources of the data, and how quickly it's coming into our data warehouse. Um, the the data and and certainly the big data warehouse or anything else is worthless if it doesn't provide any value and that goes all the way back to our architecture are we capturing the right thing to do what the business is asking us or what leadership is asking us about and we'll touch more on big data analytics when we hit chapter seven a little later on this first week is a quick intro to our semester uh, and what we have coming, and to just establish a little bit of terminology around data analytics uh, and business intelligence. But we do have one assignment that we're going to start off with just to get our feet wet talking a little bit about it. Um, and I have a just a quick comment here. The Walt Disney Company <clears throat> uses vast amounts of data generated by park guests every minute. Guest movement is tracked throughout the park, and the park uses this data to relieve congestion or gain understanding on how guests, not gusts, uh, move through their day as well as what their interests may be. Considering the four following links, read the articles below and watch those videos. They're all very short and the articles are as well. And your assignment is just a one page, single space times New Roma 12, please, uh, response to the data collection and whether you think the data collected is useful to them, how they're using it, um, does it provide value to them? Are they collecting the right data? And how do you feel about this privacy concern? Did you know they track your movement when you're in the park or 
um, how do you feel about it? So take a look at those four videos. You can certainly look at more if it's uh, important to you uh, or of interest to you. Um, but tell me in a one page response, what do you think? Uh, are they doing the right thing? Is the data correct? Um, does it tell them what you think they're looking for? Um, with that, that is all we have for this chapter. Again, this is just kind of a, a kickstart for the rest of the semester and to get some of our terminology down. As always, if you have any questions, please email me and I look forward to connecting with everyone next week. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.